Thank you very much, President. I now pass the floor to Peter Piot. Thank you very much, uh, Madam President, and uh, good afternoon, everybody. Um, I can only stress what President von der Leyen uh, just said. Uh, the situation is very serious, and it risks to get worse if we, uh, you know, if we don't take more urgent and drastic measures. But the future is really in our hands. And the numbers are really staggering. Um, and let's never forget that uh, it's about people. It's about real people. These, uh, when we say that a million people uh, are infected in the, uh, in the union now, um, the deaths are rising also. Um, last week, about one third more deaths than the week before, which means that about a thousand Europeans die per day uh, from COVID. Um, and again, it's about real people. So more and more families are inf uh, affected. It's not just something that is out there uh, and is marginal. But the good news is also that uh, mortality, so the risk of dying uh, from COVID when you're hospitalized has been reduced by about half uh, as compared to the spring because we've got more experience. And also uh, there are some uh, progress has been made in terms of, of treatment, although we don't have really a cure yet. But think of it. If in a country 500 or 1,000 people have to be admitted to a hospital because of uh, COVID-19, that is as if an entire hospital was closed and shut down uh, for other people who need also hospitalization for surgery, for strokes, for, uh, you know, whatever, for cancer treatment and so on. So this has an impact on, on many, many aspects far beyond the COVID-19. And in addition, Let's not forget that COVID is not just about having either some kind of flu, some uh, a cold, um, or end up in, uh, you know, in intensive care. More and more people are now suffering from what's called long COVID, from long-term consequences. And I know what I'm talking about. I had it myself, and for months I was completely exhausted, and you have cardiac involvement, and so on and so on. So it is something that is going to be with us for quite a while. Now, where are we going? Uh, and as I mentioned, uh, we really, uh, frankly, and it's sobering at the beginning of this epidemic, which let's not forget, um, you know, nobody had heard of it, didn't exist uh, at the beginning of the year. It's hard to imagine that there was a world before, but it's true. And um, in reality, uh, there's only one virus that infects us humans that has been eradicated, and that is smallpox. That's all. And with polio, we are quite, uh, you know, we are quite close. But um, the good news is that every country has demonstrated in the spring that it can suppress the spread of this virus um, by the lockdowns and other measures. Um, so that's really uh, important. And secondly, we've learned a lot. We've learned a lot. Uh, one of the most important lessons was actually that we must act fast. We should not waste our time. Um, and we should certainly not wait until uh, people start dying in, in, in great numbers because um, that follows about three, four weeks after there is an, a surge and increase in new infections. So, and that is for sure just as night follows day. Um, we need to act when the number of cases uh, is increasing, not when people are dying. But, you know, the, the resurgence that we are seeing now after the initial successes over the summer shows how fragile these gains are. If we uh, kind of uh, relax too much the, the measures uh, that are basically uh, about behavior, uh, then we are paying a, a high price. And that's what uh, is, uh, you know, the risk that we are having now. And also we've learned that there are no silver bullets. I wish there were just one thing and then, no, it is really, as the president said, um, you know, uh, a, a, an ensemble of uh, measures but it only works if everybody applies them. If only a minority of people, for example, wears a mask, and it's the average in the European Union is about 60%, uh, that doesn't have that much impact. Uh, it, and long, you know, we need to go to about 95%. That's what they do in Singapore, for example. And that could save hundreds of thousands of lives if we all do it. The third point I'd like to make here for the future is that um, it's not about public health or the economy or versus the economy. A uh, recent analysis that was published in the Financial Times uh,
clearly show that uh, those countries that have the highest mortality and uh, you know and had the biggest problem with uh, with covid they also have the highest political uh, economic damage uh, measured as a decline in uh, in gdp so we really need to um, fix the health issue in order to make sure that the economy can uh, you know restart and uh, can thrive and lastly um, one issue that I'm concerned about that also the president mentioned is uh, Corona and uh, COVID fatigue, which I fully understand. Um, you know, it's a big difference when you say, OK, we're going to uh, be in lockdown for a month or so or two months. And then after that, everything will be fine. Uh, but I'm afraid that that's not the case. We are now talking about much longer efforts. And uh, so involving people, the citizens is uh, really key. Now, how do we get out of this? And um, theoretically, there are four options that I can think of. One is that by some miracle, the virus changes and becomes innocuous, you know, less uh, infectious and less fatal. Uh, unlikely to happen, but uh, you never know, and uh, the virus doesn't mutate that much, uh, fortunately. Secondly, um, you know, what? Uh, there is a lot of talk about so-called herd immunity. In other words, people say, okay, let's people get infected, particularly the young, because they die less, and then uh, the virus will no longer have people to infect. Uh, unfortunately, um, first of all, let's not forget that in Europe, even in the most affected cities, for example, well over 85% of people are still susceptible. So it takes a long time before we go to a level of about 60, 70% that will be needed to protect everybody. Um, but also, let's not forget that the the, the toll in deaths will be enormous. Millions of people will die. And I think in our 21st century, that's not something that we can uh, ethically uh, uh, you know, accept. A third option is that we go into lockdowns for a long, long time. But that would all push us into poverty. So we need to really have measured um, approaches. And lastly, and that's where there's light at the end of the tunnel, and that is a vaccine or vaccines, as we heard from uh, President von der Leyen. And, um, you know, the, there are lots of uh, vaccines in development, unprecedented scientific effort about anybody in the vaccine field is doing everything they can to develop a vaccine. 11 are in clinical trials. And I'm quite hopeful that by the end of the year, we will know at least w uh, how effective uh, some of these vaccines will be. Um, and uh, the Commission has done a fantastic job, I would say, in terms of ensuring that, um, you know, by uh, agreements with companies that are uh, developing these vaccines, that every citizen will have access, um, potential access to vaccines. There will be enough for everybody. However, we still need to go through the process of making sure that we have effective and safe vaccines. And, um, no shortcuts, as the uh, President von der Leyen said. Uh, so that means, uh, first of all, we need to demonstrate that they protect, and that requires clinical trials that involve 30, 60 to 100,000 people. And we need to make sure that they protect everybody, including the elderly, uh, who are the most vulnerable to die. That's the first thing. And we don't know how long the immunity will last. One year, five years, lifelong, we don't know. Secondly, safety. Absolutely no compromise there. And uh, so very careful follow-up of everybody who is enrolled in the studies, but also afterwards, when the vaccines are on the market, uh, we'll need to make sure that we carefully monitor uh, vaccines. And that, again, uh, is best done uh, through in a centralized way. Each country does it, of course, but then that we know at a European level that we know immediately when there are problems so that we can act. And then there is also the fact that we need enough of these vaccines. Again, um, for Europe, hundreds of millions, for the world, billions. And uh, so there is a concerted effort of uh, industry, of the public sector, to make sure that uh, enough uh, doses will uh, be produced. But that's not only the vaccine, but also think of it, hundreds of millions of glass vials, of syringes, and just a limit. And then there's the distribution. As the president said, we need to put in place now systems so that citizens can be vaccinated. And that is uh, a logistic challenge. But some countries have very good uh, vaccination programs. We can build on that. But it will be good to, to test it out uh, and uh, 
and a European test day for to make sure that we we learn where all the, the, the issues are, the hurdles are. And finally, will people accept the vaccine? And here I'm very worried because um, recent data from service show that uh, up to 25% of people say, I will not take that vaccine. I don't trust it. And so we need to make sure, of course, that the vaccines are safe and effective, but also do a, a big job in terms of communication. And finally, um, you know, um, I believe that the uh, Commission has really stepped up to the challenge uh, quite early on. Um, we heard it from President von der Leyen, and it goes from procurement uh, of, uh, you know, from tests to uh, protective equipment, but also now the uh, guaranteed access to, uh, to vaccines that are, are going to come, uh, but also uh, in terms of harmonizing how various member states uh, are um, dealing with this, uh, particularly when it comes to cross-border uh, issues. And I agree that uh, sharing data, sharing information is going to be, uh, be critical. Um, and for me, it really illustrates the value added of Europe and of European action, because um, let's not have any illusion, uh, this is not going to be over until it's over everywhere. So that is really uh, important. And at the same time, we need to prepare for the long term strengthen institutions in each country at the European level, from the European Centre for Disease Control, European Medicines Agency, but also making sure there is a mechanism to support and accelerate uh, innovation and research for the next pandemic and for the next generation of vaccines. So to conclude, the, the, it's very serious, but the future of this epidemic is in our hands. And we can do it. Uh, it depends on action at the national level. Leadership is extremely important in this kind of uh, issue that affects the whole of society. But in each community, uh, in each business, in each religious entity, uh, and each individual, this is a, uh, an issue where by protecting ourselves, we also protect the whole community. And I can't think of something that is uh, more of a win-win, to say it that way. And uh, so a long way to go, but I think that um, we, uh, it depends really on the actions that we are taking now, whether we will uh, make Europe safe again from this epidemic. Thank you very much for listening.